keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And he said we need to keep our heart with all diligence, meaning we need to keep our heart in subjection, keep our mind in subjection. Because it's written in the law, if you think a foolish thought, you are sinning. Jesus said, he that even lusts upon a woman with his eyes has already committed adultery. That's right. That's how you cleanse your mind. That's how you create yourself a new heart. That's how you become spiritually minded. Because you let the word of the Lord guide your thoughts. Or you let his law guide your thoughts. I want to tell you straight out, it's the law that guides your thoughts. If the law say don't steal, don't even think about stealing. The law say don't kill, don't even think about killing. The law say don't commit adultery, don't even think about committing adultery. So looking upon, yes, it is a sin to look upon a woman and lust after her, or right. for a female to look upon a man and lust after her. That is a sin because it's in the mind. That's how you become spiritually minded. Let's go to um, Proverbs chapter 7. Flip over to a couple of chapters and go ahead, brother. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Uh-huh. Keep my commandments and live. Now he said... My son, keep my word and do what? Lay up my commandments with thee. So the word that we're supposed to wash ourselves with is the commandment, is the law. The law is not done away with. We can look at the world right now and see what happens. Why? Because we teach that the law is done away with. Everything is jacked up. That's right. Gay marriage is okay in some straight. That's in the law. See what happens when you teach the law is done away with? People can do what they want to do, when they want to do. Nobody has nothing to guide them anymore because they did, with, they did away with the very spirit that we are supposed to be filled with, and that's the law. It says, my son, keep my words and lay up, hold my commandments with thee. Verse 2, keep my commandments and live. Didn't it say that the law should be health unto thy bones? That's it should right. be life unto thee, the that's word? Right. That's right. Continue. Verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. Uh -huh. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Is the law in the church as the apple of people's eye right now? No, sir. That's the most hated thing in today's the, churches is the law. Like God said something wrong. Like God made a mistake for giving us these things to guide us unto righteousness. We should really think about what we're saying and what, and what we are holding to is, is doctrine. That's right. It's nothing from Satan. Satan will want us to do away with the law because that's the word of God. Satan will want us to do opposite of what thus said the Lord. And because our t ministers are teaching that, look at the world right now and see why, what happens. This is why we need to become spiritually minded, to get back on track. Now it says, keep my commandments and live my law as the apple of thy eye, verse 3. Bind them up upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thy heart. What are we supposed to write the law at? On the table of our heart. Upon the table of our heart. Or upon our mind. That's or right. become spiritually minded. Now let's look at the um, new covenant. Because everybody claimed, oh, that old law done away with. We under the new covenant now. But I'm going to show you something about the new covenant. Remember, didn't we just read, write the law upon the table of that heart? That's right. Let's see the new covenant says anything different. Jeremiah chapter 31, we're going to start at verse 31. Brother, when you get there, go ahead and read. Jeremiah 31. In verse 31, Behold, the day is coming, said the Lord, uh -huh. that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. First of all, who is he making a new covenant with? With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So obviously he's making this covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So you would think if you're under this new covenant, you have to do the same things that the house of Judah and the house of Israel do, don't you think? That's right. People don't think. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Now, he had to make a new covenant because Israel broke the old covenant. But I'm going to show you that the new covenant is nothing different than the old covenant, except this one is sanctified by the blood of Jesus and not by the blood of bulls and goats. That's the only difference. But everything else is the same, which we're going to see. Go ahead. Which my covenant they break uh -huh. all together. I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. Uh-huh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after the day, said the Lord. Uh-huh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their heart. So what are you going to do with the law of the new covenant? Put it in their inward part. And do what? And write it in their heart. Isn't that the same thing Solomon said? That's right, brother. So the new covenant, the old covenant, is the same thing. It's still about being spiritually minded, having the law in your heart. Washing your mind with the word of God, which is his commandments, his laws, and his statutes. When you come to the Lord, it has to be a change, brothers and sisters. 
You're going to stop doing those things that's not written in the law. You're going to stop eating swine. Isn't uh, the dietary law in the law? That's right, brother. You're going to stop doing eating swine. You're going to stop worshiping these idols. Isn't a Christmas tree an idol? That's right. You will stop doing these things because you become spiritually minded. Go ahead and finish that. In the 33. Uh-huh. And I, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, just in case you don't understand, because I know we got these New Testament Christians out there. Let's flip to the New Testament and see if there's anything different. Because here at Israel Church of Jesus, we are Bible Christians. Meaning Old Testament, New Testament, it's all the word of God. Go to Hebrews chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 10. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. Brother, go ahead. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. So the even Lord. in the New Testament, it's still talking about with who? The house, the house of, of Israel. Israel. That's Isn't right. it funny how the New Testament and the Old Testament go together? Yes, sir. So why would you do away with either one? That's insane. Go ahead. And after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their mind uh -huh. and write them in their heart. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So where is the law in the new covenant? In their mind. In their mind. You become it spiritually minded. So like I said, once you become spiritually minded, because right now we know what the spirit is. If somebody say they are filled with the spirit, obviously they feel with the law of God. And they should be keeping the law of God. How are you going to tell me you feel with the spirit and on Friday nights you having catfish dinners and eating swine's flesh when the sun go down? How are you going to tell me you feel with the Spirit? When you do everything contrary to the Spirit, That's not right. keeping the Sabbath day, not honoring the dietary law. That's what filled with the Spirit is, is keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. How are you going to tell me you under the new covenant and, not, and you talking about the law is done away with? That's right. What is God in you? What spirit are you filled with? That's why the Bible says you better try that spirit because you can be filled with, filled with the spirit of Satan. You can be filled with an evil spirit like Saul was when, he, when the good spirit left him right. and the evil spirit came upon him. You got to be spiritually minded and it got to be holy spiritually minded, not an evil spiritually minded. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 7. Let's see what Paul has to say about this because we always run to Paul writings and twist them to our own destruction, as Peter says. Let's see what Paul has to say. Romans chapter 7, we're going to start at verse 6. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that now, we should serve a newness of spirit. Now, and, people would take this scripture right here, and I went here on purpose. They'll say, see, brother, we delivered from the law. See, you have no understanding of the law. We are delivered. We have a second chance through the blood of Jesus to keep the law. Because doesn't the scripture say that all have sinned? That's right. If all have sinned, according to the law, all should have death coming. But by the grace of God, his blood washed away our sins that are past. Now giving us a second chance to do what? Walk in newness of life. Walk in the spirit. Now since we all broke the law because we all didn't know no better. I didn't know no better. I used to eat swine's flesh. I used to worship that pagan holiday Christmas. Right. But luckily the Lord poured his spirit out upon me and now I know better. Now I became spiritually minded. Now I can walk in the spirit or I can walk in the law. Thank God I have that second chance to do that through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what he's, what he's talking about. We are not under the law. We're not under the penalty of the law. Brother, continue that. That we should serve in newness of spirit. Newness of spirit. And now in, you're going to walk in the law. Go ahead. And not in the oldness of the letter. Uh-huh. What should we say then? Is, is the law sin? And that's what everybody's saying right now. You go into any church and say, do I have to keep the law? They're looking at you like the law of sin. But Paul himself saying, is the law of sin? Well, what's the answer to that? God forbid. God forbid. Go ahead. Nay, I have not known sin but by the law. How else are you going to know what sin is? The Bible say that sin is transgressing the law. That's right. If you break the law, you are sinning. So think about it. If the law is done away with, how do you have sin? Common sense. That's why you need to be spiritually minded. That's why the world is like it is today. Nobody can tell this person doing something wrong because they doing something wrong because you done away with the law. That's right. See what happens when you done away with the law? People walk around in fear every day. If the world is total lawlessness, that's what happens when you do away with the law. 
Now it says the law of sin, God forbid, and they have, I have not known sin, but by, by the law. Go ahead.